Hey, what is up guys? Vios here and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about how you can organize your tracks uh, and your sessions inside FL Studio. Okay, uh, this is very important. Uh, first of all, it looks a lot more professional and it's a lot more fun to see, you know, everything named well and colored and everything. Also, you're going to be a lot more efficient, okay? You're going to save a lot of time. You're not going to wonder, okay, what the hell is pattern 184 or whatever kind of thing. And also, it's going to give you a very accurate visual representation so you're not only gonna get you know what it sounds like you're gonna see what it sounds like too uh, let's say this is it sounds a little empty at this part well only this is what's going on so I can add stuff layer stuff you know kind of thing it's just a second piece of advice um, okay we're gonna be using three tricks throughout this video and that's gonna be labeling color coding and consistency okay what I mean by consistency is like um, you know it's the channel rack is consistent with the uh, playlist and that's consistent with the mixer etc etc okay so I'm just gonna load up a brand new project so that you guys can follow along basically first of all we gotta name all our instruments right make everything nice and ready to go so uh, we're gonna put that all in red like that I like my drums being red that's just a personal preference though and what I'm gonna do is make sure that it's consistent with my mixer so I'm gonna you know, click on the instrument, click on track, that's automatically gonna link it to the next available slot in the mixer and it's gonna name it with the name from the channel rack and the color, so that's really useful. We just linked the channel rack to the mixer very simply, okay, and it's very, it's a very good technique. Now, second of all, we're gonna want to name our patterns and name what's going on, right? So I'm just going to create a nice little uh, kick loop, whatever, um, and we're going to name this kick-verse. Let's say this was my verse that I was working on, okay? And now I'm going to put it in my playlist. What you can do while you're naming it, pattern that is, is uh, color it red automatically, okay? So all your drums and stuff like that should be the same color for the most part. Okay, and this just makes it so easy instead of like creating a new pattern when you just want to change the snare You can just change the snares pattern, you know, so it's super easy like that and here Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna create a drum group. Okay, right in the playlist and We're gonna name this. Okay? This is gonna be our kick track So only the kick is gonna be there. So if I solo this and play the whole song, I'm only gonna hear the kick Okay, that's what we want. The way I actually group things on the playlist is I right click and click group with above track. So now uh, I can fold the group and if I wanted to mute everything in the group, every single MIDI track in here is gonna be muted if, if it's folded and I, if I click that. So now I won't hear anything at all. Uh, it's very useful uh, to do that. Okay, so now I have my kick. Let's move on to the snare, okay? like that snare dash verse one so do this for every single part of your song um, I'm gonna color code it red automatically like that and create a nice track for it okay uh, you can definitely create a default project for this it's just gonna save you so much time like it's insane okay once again let's say I wanted to create a, an alternation here I just have to edit the uh, snare track right so there you go I didn't have to edit any of these patterns I could maybe write okay well this is the verse a b you know and then this one would be a just keep it consistent you know so we we named the patterns we named the instruments colored the instruments and grouped the elements together okay that you can do this inside the channel rack as well and i highly recommend it uh it's just gonna save you a lot of time so you can right click and drag okay and that's gonna allow you to select you know the diff the ones you want alt g okay then you can write drums, and that just created a drum group inside the uh, channel rack. Super useful. So let's say I had a ton of other instruments in here as well. Okay, and then I just go in my drums. The, uh, only the drums are going to show up, right? Uh, and in terms of sidechain, very important. Every EDM song needs sidechain. So I have a video on that, by the way. Look up Veja's sidechain. Okay, uh, so I'm just going to create a nice sidechain instrument here. It's a MIDI out. And we're gonna make it a gray. Okay, I like gray for this. It just differentiates it from the drums. Um, although it still is uh, part of the drums. So, there you go, drums. Now I added it to the drum bus by Alt-G and naming it the same group as uh, the drum bus. 
group was named. You can also delete groups or rename them by right clicking like that. Okay, super useful. So now there you go. And I'm gonna create a uh, track only for sidechain now. Chain like that in the playlist, right? We're creating consistency throughout everything uh, in the project. Just under the snare, so kick, snare, sidechain. That's how I do it. You can do it however you want though. Uh, here I like having hats and rides. Um, you can refer to the uh, first part of the video if you want to see uh, how I actually do it because I actually showed you. But yeah, basically, yeah, that's how I do it. And then I'll have one trigger here. Okay, it's usually a 16th note for me. And I'll just put it here. I'll rename this to trigger. I'm also going to color it the same color as, uh, you know, everything else that, that's sidechain related. So now, super easy just to keep track of where the sidechain is happening, what is ducking what kind of thing, right? And there should be no pattern at all that would be named like pattern three, because like, what the hell is pattern three? Uh, let's say an engineer opens up your pattern or your project. He's gonna open up a bunch of like stuff that he has no idea. But you know, if you just right click here, now you know everything is named so uh, okay I want to refer back to that verse uh, pattern then I have it okay so yeah let's uh, let's move on a little bit maximum one instrument per pattern you know it, it's just a big pain when you have to go find that one instrument that shouldn't be in that pattern that is you know so uh, what I did I had to go back in my old project and separate the sub bass from my growls and all that stuff. If you're scared because like, holy shit, all my old projects are disorganized, don't worry, you can totally fix it. Let's go into our mixer here. So, keep it consistent. We already did that uh, by linking the channel rack instruments to the mixer automatically, right? Uh, now, what we can do is create subgroups, okay? So, I'm just going to create a um, another channel here and put it right before the drums. Make it the color of the drums, right? So, now, we're going to link all of these uh, drum tracks directly into that drum groups route to this track only right so now if I mute this drum bus now we get nothing right nothing uh, and another thing you can do here is just create a group inside the mixer itself create group like that blah 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 right so now you can separate everything like that let's say I had a bunch of synthesizers here okay uh, I like synths being blue for some reason <laughs> But okay, so now I'm gonna group that, create group, ta-da. So right, everything is separated. I have a synth bus as well for everything. Bass was, will have its own subgroup. Instruments and vir virtual instruments, I put them in the same group. Um, and effects and atmosphere, I call that scene, like scenery. Um, it's gonna have its own subgroup, that kind of thing. And I usually send those subgroups to the sidechain instead of having every instrument uh, being sent to the sidechain. Speaking of sending stuff, uh, you can use effect sends instead of using a reverb on each channel, right? Think about it. Let's say you have a reverb on each and every one of these tracks, right? That's a lot of CPU power. When all you can do is create a send, okay, and I'll show you how to do that. We're gonna create a send right here. Okay, this is gonna be our reverb. You know, color it some funky color. Put some reverb on there. 100% wet, no dry whatsoever, okay? There you go. Now I can send a little bit of that slowly. If you click on the little arrow down there, uh, and then you start dragging that up. Right, so that that's how the pros do it. That's seriously. So yeah, that's pretty much how I organize everything. Uh, you can also create markers here by pressing Control T on the playlist. Um, Right, so that, let's say this is our verse, perfect. We know that's our verse. Make sure everything is named consistently throughout everything. Right, color coding everything, super important. Well, thank you guys for watching this video. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed, and yeah, follow my Twitter. If you need assistance one-on-one -on -one with this stuff, I do actually offer private lessons, so just hit me up on my email. And yeah, I'll see you guys on the next stream or video. Take care.